Hey, today we'll be discussing my best and most optimal lighting setup for wedding receptions. Over the years, I've experimented with different techniques and different equipment to kind of find finally that style that I feel comfortable. And through that, I finally found that this approach that I'm following specifically get the consistency on the results for all of my weddings. I will be sharing all of the details of my setup and also explaining how I'm able to create that warm and inviting atmosphere, not just for my couple, but also to all of the guests. Now, let me prepare the field to better illustrate exactly how I'm setting this up. Now this will be all the lighting equipment we'll be using for this. So let's say that this is a typical wedding reception venue. You got the dance floor and then on top here you got the sweetheart table and then at the bottom usually it's a DJ booth. Well and this one right here would be basically the entrance from where the bride and groom are going to be coming from. I will set myself either on the top of the dance floor or maybe a little bit to the side of it so that I can capture as they coming in. Low ones would for the most part would be set up here. However if she feels like there's a better shot anywhere else around that she can move. The the way I'm setting the two lights is to make sure that the attention is set on the dance floor. I will have one position a little further in than the entrance for the bride and groom are coming from so that it kind of hits like this. The second light would be focused on their faces. That also ensures as I'm rotating around the dance floor, I will be able to pretty much have them live properly everywhere I'm in. So as you can see, I am rocking these two Godax 8300. They might be a little too powerful for exactly what I'm trying to get. To be honest with you, I will have them in maybe 130 seconds power or maybe 116 depending on how big the room will be and one of the things that i want to make sure that i do is is that these lights do not spill into any of the walls because i want to make sure that i keep true to the colors that are basically designed for that reception so in order for me to do that i take this out then i'll put this kind of bowl with that honeycomb grid i don't know if you can see it and what i do with this is making sure that it hits all of the subjects that are laid on the dashboard and not necessarily anything that goes around that on most of the weddings that i'm shooting here uh people like putting kind of different colors around all of the walls so i want to stay true to those colors that the couple chose so that's why I like just keeping those colors on the background. I would send my camera on an ISO no more than maybe 1250. I'll shoot at a very lower shutter speed. I would say 1 60th of a second or even 1 50th of a second. The good thing about it is, is that I'm lighting up with my flashes. So I'm not really worried about getting a lot of motion blur. I might get a little bit here and there, but to be honest with you, that kind of adds a little more mood into all the images. So. I'm, I can't complain. This is basically the Godox 8200. If you got multiple of these, you don't necessarily need the 8300 because this would actually give you more than enough power for the, than you ever need. What I do with this, this is more like the mobile light. So I get a cheetah stand, which is super easy to collapse. I just kind of move around really quick. That's one of the things that I love about those stands. For instance, if I'm doing like speeches for the maid of honor and best man, what's gonna happen is I just like setting up the mood to have kind of a little bit of mood into it with the lighting. But I also want to make sure that everybody around that is lit properly too. I may either put this on a Mac mod, which is, uh, actually, let me get it for you. So this is the Mac mod, which I will also leave a link in the description. So I put this on the top. Um, I have to have the magnet. I actually took it off because I was using it for other things. But you would put it here on the top. The cool thing about this is, is that it spreads the light evenly. And it's a very soft light too. So you don't have any harsh lighting or anything like that, which is super, super cool. And then for my in-camera flash, I use the Godox V1. I just love the versatility and I love the fact that it's round. It's not typically a rectangle as all the other flashes do. I would pop this guy in, which is, um, it spreads the light nicer and then it also makes the light a little soft too. So you don't have those harsh flash lights that you typically see. So it kind of helps a lot with that. So the way that I would use it on my camera, I would just slowly tilt it a little bit. So it kind of goes a little behind me, kind of this way. And then it kind of bounces back from the wall into the subject. The cool thing about me using it this way is that if I'm shooting vertically, what I would do is, I would just tilt it and as you can see look how the light still spreading either back to the bounce and also keeps the light in the subject 
which is pretty good. Now, depending on the setup and also the type of venue that I'm in, it would determine whether if I'm starting the bride and groom entrance that walks into the first dance, whether if I'm using the 50 millimeter lens or my 15 to 35 RF. If we're in a very small room, obviously I'll use the zoom lens. I'll have the versatility of zooming in a little bit, although it's a 2.8, so I'm not really a big fan of that, but it's still an amazing lens. So when the first dance comes in, then you'll notice that nice bokeh in the background, which is what I want to give to my couples at that moment. Now, when it comes to people partying and having a good time and doing the dancing and all that stuff, I will rock just the 15 to 35 RF. And the cool thing about it, on 15 millimeter, you can pretty much capture everybody on the dance floor and it helps getting a lot more mood into the dancing and the motions of people as they're having fun. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. What kind of setups do you guys use for reception? Just let me know down below. I'll be happy to hear it. Now you guys tell me if you want to see the camera setups that are kind of very, very specific now that I think about it. If you want me to make a video of kind of what kind of setup I use, which by the way, I use a Canon R5 just for you guys to know. Now, if you like this video, I actually got another video that talks a lot about the uses of my camera lenses when I'm approaching the day from the very beginning to the very end. So if you would like to watch that video, just click this link that's about to pop up now.